Good morning. My name is Meg Boyd. I'm executive director here at the Conservancy, and what a pleasure to see so many young scientists in the room today. Now, on your way in, you undoubtedly saw a little bit of construction, maybe some mud out there, and I want to take a quick moment to share with you what's to come here at the Conservancy. So thanks to the support of many donors, including Howard County, the state of Maryland, foundations, corporations, and individuals, we are expanding our building. This will give us additional space for school programs and an improved experience for all of our visitors. We'll have a new outdoor classroom, interactive exhibits, an animal care room, and a community meeting room. In just four short weeks, we'll be cutting the ribbon and inviting you all back to see this exciting project and learn more about all the Conservancy has to offer. Now, today is a very exciting day, the culmination of a year of research by 1,250 students from 12 high schools. <laughs> by now, you've had a chance to preview that very impressive report card. This was really only possible because of the energy and commitment of our partners, our volunteers, teachers, students, elected officials, and funders like Noah Bewet. What's really special about this program is that it engages students in authentic data collection with multiple touch points throughout the year. And it allows students to evaluate the data that they collected and to use it to advocate with leaders, which you'll be doing later today. Here at the Conservancy, we know the importance of data, of facts, and of science. And we thank all of the teachers and students for their commitment to environmental science and this very important project. As our future leaders, we are counting on you all. This year, we piloted a lesson on the Ellicott City Flood as part of this program. Students role-played developers, residents, environmental leaders, and engineers as they studied a real-life watershed event in our community. In July, this is what Ellicott City's Main Street looked. In November, at nearby Mount Pepper High School, this is the scene. So anyone would like to make some opening statements? Students, part of a year-long study on Howard County's watershed, grounded in reality. When the Alcott City flood happened, this was a real-life example of, of a disaster in their watershed, and it gave us the opportunity for these students to really apply what they have been learning all year. An opportunity to ask the question, could the severity of the flood in Ellicott City been prevented? There are so many factors that went into the flood. You know, there wasn't, it wasn't just that it rained a lot that night. We were thinking about sort of some of the guidelines that we should put in place with like more pervious surfaces to absorb and create sort of more buffer so the water doesn't flow as fast. The students took on roles as real estate developers, elected officials, even store owners affected by the flood. We wanted to see all the points of views, so then we did the debate. I think we should just focus on Hopefully they've had a chance to uh, look at it from uh, the scientific side and also some of the case studies that have been out there. So they have a more holistic view of the situation they're facing. It's a view that depending on the role can differ from one side of the table to the other, but one that these students hope leads to progress. We need to change things now in order to like prevent stuff like this from happening again. From Howard County, Omar Menes of UBALT, the news. So, great story, and thank you to Mount Hebron for piloting that project for us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, before our county executive and our deputy superintendent kick off the program today, I'd like to take a moment to recognize and thank the elected officials and VIPs in attendance today. So, please stand to be recognized when your name is called. We have Alan Kittleman, Howard County Executive. Uh, Linda Wise, Deputy Superintendent. Mary Weller, Coordinator of Secondary Science. 
Kevin Chibot is not quite here yet, but he's a very important guy. He is the guy that gave us a grant to do this project from Noah Be Wet. He'll be coming here later. He's going to make it in time to engage and talk with you guys after your presentation. Uh, Amanda Sullivan from Maryland DNR. Is Amanda here? Uh, let's see. Uh, Jesse from John Weinstein's office. <laughs> Delegate Robert Flanagan. <laughs> Sandra French from the school board. <laughs> and Donna Balado, did I get it right? From the Maryland State Department of Education. We also have Barb Schmeckpepper from the Watershed Stewards Academy. And Lori Lilly from Howard EcoWorks. Mark Sutherland, the chair of the Community Sustainability Board. And Charlie Miller with the Board of Directors at the Conservancy. I hope I didn't miss anyone. Raise your hand if I did. Okay, excellent. So now I would like to uh, welcome our county executive, Alan Kittleman, to help us kick off this program. The so the Kittleman support of the Conservancy dates back nearly 20 years ago to when his father, Bob, was on our board of directors and really helped shape this organization. And we're so pleased to have the continued support of the Kittlemans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Meg. And it's a pleasure to be with all of you and all the students. Uh, about, I think it was three years ago my son was yeah. here from, from Glen Ellen. And, and I know it's an opportunity for you to do some things that maybe you don't normally do in school. But you know, when I was thinking about this morning coming over here, I was thinking, you know, Howard County, we take very seriously education, no question about it. We also take very seriously our environment. And what a better way of putting those together than having the watershed report and having you guys do what you do, having education be part of learning about the environment, and not just learning about the environment, but how to help us, who are decision makers, maybe in Analog City, do things better. And for those from Mount Hebron who are involved in uh, looking at the flood, uh, that was something else. And it was a, certainly a big thing for our, our county and our state to deal with. And to have you be part of trying to figure out how a better solution, it means a lot to us. And I appreciate the input that you can give us and the way you can help us. But again, it's just really important for all of us to understand that we might not be here forever, but this land is going to be here and our water. We need to make sure it's there for our children and our children's children. So thank you very much for what you're doing. And I want to thank the Howard County uh, Public Schools, the Board of Education, and certainly all the, all the educators who are dealing with this topic uh, for all they do because I tell you they go way beyond what's expected because you guys are worth it. Thank you very much. And I forgot to mention that Alan is a graduate of Appleton High School. Yeah. Appleton? Yeah. yeah. Next. Uh, right here, right here, Alan. Uh, next up, I'd like to welcome Linda Wise, the Deputy Superintendent for the School System. And uh, both Linda and Dr. Foose have been terrific supporters of science, both inside and outside the classroom. So thank, thank you, you for that. Thank you very much, and good morning, everyone. Um, today, you're going to hear all the important work that our students have been doing. And I want to talk a little bit about the kind of work that was involved in a project like this. So this wasn't just a traditional classroom experience. Students here today, they conducted original, substantial, and scientific research on a real world issue. We all know how much that matters. They used the same careful methods that professional scientists use to develop research questions, to collect and analyze data, and to evaluate the watershed's human impact. This is really important work. Thanks to the work of the students here today, our county leaders, and our environmental scientists, we'll have valuable data to inform decisions that impact our entire county. So this is really important work. 
This watershed report card project has played an important part in sustaining the Howard County environment for several years now. This year, we're pleased that the project has expanded into a statewide watershed report card modeled on your, your work, the Howard County program, and involving 13 school systems across Maryland. Let's give the students and staff a big round of applause. This is truly an excellent example of the type of dynamic and experience-based learning that are embedded throughout our entire science curriculum, throughout the entire school system, and our priority of our Vision 2018 strategic plan. And I want to thank Mary Weller, the coordinary, coordinator of science, who's just extraordinary. Stand up, Mary. We're very fortunate to have the Conservancy here, and I want to thank Alan Kittleman in particular for all of his efforts on behalf of the school system. It's very much appreciated. Let's give our county executive a big round of applause. Now, our Conservancy staff and volunteers work alongside our own teachers to lead classrooms on field trips, research projects, and many other programs that truly brings science learning to life for our students. I want to personally thank Meg Boyd and every staff member and volunteer of the Conservancy. The work that you do is just extraordinary. So students, congratulations for presenting today and completing this important work. Thank you. Next, please welcome Mary Weller, coordinator of secondary science and a wonderful partner to us here at the Conservancy. So good morning. Ms. Boyd has given me 30 minutes on the agenda this morning, so settle in. Truly good morning, and uh, it's a pleasure to greet you and to be with you this morning. It's also uh, a little belated, but please allow me to wish everybody here and everybody watching uh, uh, through our streaming uh, a happy but belated Earth Day. Our Earth, a rock that we call home, it hurtles through space at about 67,000 miles per hour. Everything that we need to thrive, it's right here. And though it may seem uh, quite rugged, it turns out that our Earth is actually quite delicate. Our individual footprints may not seem very significant, but our collective footprints have huge impact. Student scientists, like everyone gathered here today, I eagerly anticipate learning from your objective scientific analysis of our local watershed. You've assumed the role of student scientists in order to ask important questions and set about establishing an understanding through objective, evidence-based means so that you can advise policies and practices. Ultimately, though, the work that you've accomplished uh, during the past eight months, it's not just about the measurements that you've made. It's not just about the report card that's unveiled today. Your work is really about science and the endeavor of science. You and your work are evidence of these things. Science is not something that only some people can or should do. Science is something that every one of us must participate in. Science is not simply a collection of information that's presented in stale texts or through lectures. Instead, science is alive, it's dynamic, and it's exciting. Science is not simply something that happens in school. Science is something that happens all around us, and it impacts our lives every single day. Primarily, however, the work that you've accomplished as student scientists is evidence that genuine scientific inquiry leads us to an understanding that supports stewardship of our delicate rock. The celebration of your accomplishments is the focus of our time together today, but it's not the end of our work. As Ms. Wise just mentioned, we're really 
uh, excited about having other school systems around the state join us on this journey. It's also exciting that next year we will welcome even more student scientists into this work as we expand this program to include students not only in biology, but also students in the Earth Space Systems course. Above all today, um, we celebrate that each of you is now ready to assume the mantle of leadership uh, to be active and engaged scientists and to make positive differences in our world going forward. Student scientists, congratulations for the work that you've accomplished. Teachers, congratulations for the hard work that you've accomplished. Ms. Strozik, Ms. Boyd, congratulations and thank you for all of the work that you have done and to everybody at the Howard County Conservancy. I can't wait to hear the rest of your message today, and I thank you very much for my half hour. Okay, last up before we get to your presentations is Ann Strozik. Ann is an Oakland Mills graduate. Uh, Anne, Anne is actually a school system educator who is placed here at the Conservancy to integrate programs just like this one into our schools. Anne brings a very, very special energy to everything she does, most importantly teaching and mentoring our next generation of scientists and stewards. Good morning. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here with you. This has been a year, a year-long project, and today here we are to hear from you. So I'm not going to talk very long, but I do want to mention something that the administration and teachers don't want to hear. This time, it's not so much about what the report card says, right? It's more about the journey of learning. Practicing science, maybe we fail, maybe we do well, but we try again, we sample again, we collect our data, we go and we analyze it, and we own that data. And that's what's the most important thing about this process, is not necessarily so much the final product, but what we learn along the way. So speaking of learning along the way, we have some people to thank to help us through that process. And I would first like to, again, recognize our science office, Mary Weller, Jackie Austin, and Jessica Mulhern, if you could stand up. Their support is absolutely amazing and adds so much to our framework. When your school's name is called, please stand up to be recognized. Mrs. Klotz and Appleton High School. Ms. Hayfitz, Ms. Reynolds, and Centennial High School. <laughs> Mr. Burton, Ms. Montminy, Dr. Shepard, Glenel High School. <laughs> Ms. Lidgard, Ms. Ferrero, and Hammond High School. Ms. Maddox, Ms. Johnson, and Homewood High School. <laughs> Mr. Wazaleski, Wasaluski, I'm so sorry. Um, Ms. Bennett, Ms. Duff, and Longreach High School. <laughs> Ms. Goldison, Ms. Allman, and Marriott's Ridge High School. Dr. Cockley, Ms. Cassetta, Mr. Sabota, and Mount Hebron High School. <laughs> Ms. Erzy, Oakland Mills High School. <laughs> Mr. Saunderson, Ms. Bruce, Ms. Park, and Reservoir High School. Ms. McKin Ms. McKinley, Ms. Lauer, and River Hill High School. <laughs> Ms. 
Mr. Lamont, Ms. Carpenter, Mr. Mandel, and Wild Lake High School. And I have to mention the glue of the program, all of our green shirt Howard County Conserving Volunteers. Marcus Stevenson, GT Mentor Intern, keeping me straight this year. And then there's Ellie. Ellie, Conservation Corps Intern for the Year. Please stand up, Ellie. Going to law school for the environment next fall. Without further ado, we warmly welcome our first presenters, Homewood High School. Please come up. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Faith. And I'm Taco on Gardner. And we're from Homewood Center. And as you can see, Homewood is that red flag, and it's in between two watersheds. You got the Middle Protection River and the Little Protection River. As you can see, we took a couple of days to collect our data, and the stream corridor rating was good. The chemical rating was also good, but our bi biological rating was very poor, and that means there is a very, yeah, you know, a lot of living organisms in the water. Uh, that's it. That's all we got. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Carmela D'Antuano. And I'm Libby Carey. And we're thrilled to represent the Glenow High School Gladiators. Our school is part of the Patuxent River watershed, and more locally, the Brighton Dam subwatershed. We're here to convey our results from the evaluations of Glenow Schoolyard and Stream through our biology classes, under the direction of Dr. Jennifer Shepard and Ms. Jessica Mominy. Overall, the Brighton Dam subwatershed of the Patuxent River watershed received a B rating. The scores range from fair to excellent in three categories, stream corridor, chemical water quality, and biological water quality. We found many macroinvertebrates while evaluating the stream, but my personal favorite were the water pennies. Water pennies are three to 10 millimeters long and are mostly brown and copper in color. The abundance of these macroinvertebrates signifies that the water quality was good, for water pennies are very sensitive to pollutants and need an abundance of oxygen to thrive. Our recommendation for improving stream health includes decreasing impervious surfaces surrounding the stream, mostly through making the two primary parking lots grass as opposed to pavement. The chief problem affecting the water quality was their erosion. Both stream banks were extremely eroded, therefore causing major runoff to be deposited in the stream and affecting the water quality greatly. This could be approved upon by adding a native plant buffer along the sides of the stream. This would decrease the runoff going into the stream water, thereby decreasing the amount of pollutants bringing down the water quality. The Brighton Dam subwatershed is already at a B rating and with a few easy improvements can be brought up to an A. As you can see in your copy of the watershed report card, not a single school received a good rating for the watershed. Glenelg was among the worst with a score of 12.5. The best possible score would be sub-zero, so this is quite poor and can be approved upon with other environmental features. Our highest and therefore worst sub-score was for pollution with a score of four. The most problematic areas include pollution, stormwater management, and land cover. Currently, the best watershed feature is the stenciling of our storm drains to remind people that anything that goes down the drain goes directly into the bay. Our schoolyard assessment score includes an environmental feature bonus from the stencil storm drains. Seeing its success at the Applied Research Laboratory, we, <coughs> laboratory, we recommend the implementation of a NOMO meadow, an area with limited maintenance where grass is allowed to grow uninhibited. This will impede the flow of stormwater, preventing a rapid influx of water into the stream, which brings with it pollutants and erodes the banks of the stream. Advocacy for this improvement would consist of petitioning the school board to change the maintenance plan for Glenelg and coordinating with school administration and student service groups, such as the Glenelg Earth Organization, to make it happen. The toxicity of the runoff is due largely to the state of our waste management implements. 
There are massive amounts of leakage from the dumpsters compo comprised of food waste and oil. This can be remedied through better maintenance of the waste management implements and a composting system to most properly dispose of leftover food. With funding, we will be able to advocate for the better waste management system and gain support from different Glen Oak clubs and organizations. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Darshan Varya. And I'm Lindsay Loudon. We are here today on behalf of Mount Hebron High School. This year, we have been taught under the direction of Mr. Sabota, Ms. Whetstone, and Ms. Cassetta. The region we have studied is the South Branch Patapsco sub-watershed. The South Branch Patapsco watershed had the most macroinvertebrates of all streams surveyed. Our most unique macroinvertebrate found were crayfish, small lobster-like animals that feed on living and dead plants and animals. Additionally, we found high conductivity levels in our stream. In summation, our biological and stream corridor rating was good, while our chemical rating was excellent. After completing our stream site checkup, we came to the conclusion of an overall grade of a B. Moving forward, our recommendation for this location is to further investigate the high conductivity levels found at the stream, as this could, po this could possibly be pollution, resulting from the Ellicott City floods. We also recommend that stream site cleanups be increased to help recover from the tragic July 30th floods. These cleanups would allow for the progress of recovery to be measured and for the overall health of the watershed to be back to its healthy state. After the analysis of the South Branch Patapsco watershed, we went back to our own school to investigate our own schoolyard property. We found that our land coverage scored a 0.5, the vegetative coverage had a score of 1.8, our pollution sources had a score of 1.5, and our stormwater management had a score of zero. This gave us the overall score for our property of a 4.3, which has an overall grade of a C+. This is the best schoolyard score in the county, but together we could do better and there are many actions we could take to improve our grade even further. After the inspection, we learned at the school that we could clean and clear our inlet gutters as well as establish a possible future rain garden. By planting a rain garden, polluted runoff could be kept from impervious surfaces such as parking lots, the roads, student walkways, and driveways. The garden would be planted in a depression in the ground, allowing for the water to be absorbed there. Rain gardens could cut the amount of runoff and pollution reaching creeks and streams by 30%, which would ultimately benefit the Patapsco watershed. Our school has received a $2,000 grant for this garden, so we'd like to thank all who have been a part of helping Mount Hebron High School get the money. We will definitely put the money to good use and plant a rain garden in the near future. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Colin Kelly. And I'm Ella Minarelli, and we go to Marriott Ridge High School. A little fun fact about Marriott Ridge High School is actually on the cusp of two watersheds, being the Patapsco and the Patuxent. Are we supposed to change that? How do we do it? I don't know. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, this fall, Marriott Ridge took a tramp to the Davis branch of the Patapsco River and tested the water quality. Uh, our data showed that there was poor macroinvertebrate in the stream and that these stream banks were eroded, but overall there was good water quality. The overall letter grade I received was a B. The contributing factors to this was the stream, cor stream corridor rating or the physical features of the stream, which were good, but these stream banks were eroded. Uh, the chemical rating was excellent, meaning we did not find a lot of phosphate, nitrogen in it. Uh, the pH was balanced and there was a lot of dissolved oxygen. The biological rating was poor due to a lack of macroinvertebrate. There was not a wide variety and there was not a lot of macroinvertebrate in the stream, showing that the uh, stream wasn't tolerable for the macroinvertebrate. What we would advocate doing is adding plantings to the riparian buffer system, which the county actually came in and did this winter. So in two to three years, the stream should be thriving and there should be an increase in macroinvertebrate. So after we visited the Davis branch in the winter, we then analyzed our own schoolyard and we got an overall letter score of a D, which is mainly due to the high pollution sources, which could be from trash in the schoolyard, um, erosion spots, or cracks in the parking lot. Uh, after analyzing our own schoolyard, we concluded that our best schoolyard feature was our storm drain stenciling and our storm water pond. Uh, we also found we had 
great water quality in the stormwater pond, but bare soil and erosion could potentially be a problem. Uh, in order to prevent those problems from occurring, we, our advocacy recommendation is to have something as simple as individuals coming out and cleaning up the schoolyard or to complete our storm drain stenciling, which is gonna happen in May, actually. And we also think it'll be beneficial to reinstall a no-mow meadow where you don't cut the grass as much and it filters the runoff, so um, it's more filtered water going into the stormwater pond. Thank you for listening. Hello, my name is Sarah Justice. I'm Kamai Ziki. And we are students at Long Ridge High School, Home of the Lightning. Kamai and I are both students in Ms. Duff's and Ms. Bennett's biology classes, and this year we decided to do some um, research um, in the Patapsco watershed. Um, Long Ridge is actually located in the Little Patuxent sub-watershed, but since 60% of our population is located in Patapsco, we decided to do our research there. And we also did some research on our school grounds, so Kamai will get to that in a second. So starting off with our research uh, from the Lower Patapsco River, both our classes took a field trip to Patapsco, and while we were there, we took some water samples to see um, what was in the water. We looked for different macroinvertebrates, and as you can see, our favorite was the dragonfly. And we also looked at the surrounding um, plants, such as logs and trees and stuff like that, and see how it affected the water. Um, we found some concerns with the sediment overload and debris from the July 30th storm in Old Lake City, so we found a lot of bricks and tile. And we also found high levels of nitrate, and nitrate actually is good in water, but too much can actually cause um, more algae to grow, which can take away from uh, oxygen, which can create dead zones. Uh, so in the end, we came to con the conclusion that our overall letter grade was a B, which is quite good, but all good things have some things they can improve on. So we decided that we would clean up uh, the river from the July 30th storm, and we'd also do a little bit more research on uh, nitrate levels and see how it affects water. So it's always a great idea to keep improving um, areas around you and in your community, so that's why we did similar studies on our school ground. Unfortunately, our poor scores come from sources of pollution, which can include trash in the parking lot. However, each year our students at Long Beach are doing things to improve our ratings. For example, our best schoolyard feature includes waste stations in the cafeteria, which helps students separate compost materials, recyclables, and garbage. Our advocacy recommendations include providing more information about the compost bins in our school by making videos to present to classes, hanging signs on the bins and around the school, and giving presentations to classes. Our final way to advocate is to grow a native plant garden to, around the storm drains at our school to prevent storm runoff to go in the drains. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mahira Chaudhary, and I'm a ninth grader at Reservoir High School, and I'm currently taking Biology GT with Ms. Park. Hello, my name is Ethan Dixon, and I attend the ninth grade at Reservoir High School. I am currently enrolled in Biology GT with Ms. Cahoot. Okay. In the beginning of the school year, we went to the Middle Patuxent sub-watershed, where we did many different experiments and observations to assess the overall health of our stream. These experiments, these experiments included um, pH testing, pH, pH testing, vegetation, and erosion in our pond. One of our favorite activities was actually going into the stream and sampling different microinvertebrates species in their natural habitat. Our favorite was the stonefly, which is pictured up here. After collecting our data, our main conclusions were that there were high amounts of nitrate in the water, which is a good thing for plants, but too much of it can cause other things um, to be bad. Um, we also saw that the biological rating as well as the stream corridor rating was not as good as our, or our, our chemical rating. Um, in order to improve, we should focus greatly on erosion because that was one of the main things that we saw there. Um, and we can do this by planting native species along the water banks of the stream. Our biology classes then analyzed the positive and negative features of our schoolyard. Uh, yes, including land cover, vegetative cover, pollution sources, and stormwater management. Our students concluded that our schoolyard is both well-developed and environmentally friendly. <coughs> our best features include our recently stenciled storm drains, our native species plant garden, and our compost bins. However, no schoolyard is without fault. 
In the case of Reservoir High School, our problems include negative pollution from littering and vegetative and land cover issues resulting from too many impervious surfaces. Overall, we scored a 4.5 or a C plus based on the schoolyard rating scale, close behind Mount Hebron and second in the county. In order to improve the situation of our schoolyard, our biology classes decide to update our native species plant garden, advocate for the use of our multiple compost bins, and introduce a campus-wide trash cleanup. The planting for our garden begins this Thursday, and all biology classes are currently taking part in the campus-wide trash cleanup. We at Reservoir hope to see more funding for both the Environmental Protection Agency and the Chesapeake Bay Restoration Program, as both will help the environment and sub-watersheds in the years to come. Thank you, and go Gators. Good morning, everybody. My name is David Aldo. And my name is Jordan Cray, and we are from Hammond High School in the Middle Patuxent sub-watershed. And the teachers that helped us through this process are Ms. Ferraro, Ms. Griffin, and Ms. Kelly. I mean, Mr. Griffin and Ms. Kelly. Sorry. So we visited the Middle Patuxent sub-watershed, and what we rated the stream corridor was good. We rated the chemical rating good to all as well, and the biological rating good. Our overall letter grade for it was a B. So our favorite macroinvertebrate was a lug snail, and lug snails are pollution tolerant, which means they can survive in water that is like has a lot of pollution. Some advocacy recommendations that we had were to increase native vegetation to um, decrease fertilization and pollution that gets into the water and remove invasive plants and a shrimp cleanup. Uh, in our schoolyard, um, we have stenciled storm drains and our best outdoor feature, schoolyard feature, is the outdoor classroom. But we also have high nitrate and phosphate levels. Our land court cover, we gave a score of one. Vegetation cover got a score of 2.83. Our pollution sources got a score of 3.29. And our stormwater management got a score of zero, giving us an overall letter score of an 8.8, .8, which is a D. We realized that we could use some improvement. So uh, as our class, we have decided to advocate for um, an increase in schoolyard cleanups, and we will be working with the green team at our school to plan those and put those into motion. And we are also going to plant more native plants in our schoolyard, and we are excited to announce that those have been ordered, and the planting of more native plants will occur this May. Thank you. Jackie. And I'm Zach. And we go to Centennial High School, home of the Eagles. And we are located in the Little Patuxent sub watershed. However, we did our stream analysis in the Middle Patuxent watershed. We discovered that our overall letter grade was a B because our stream corridor rating was excellent. Our chemical rating was also excellent. However, our biological <laughs> rating was poor. This may be because of the clarity of the water since there is a lot of sediment. This could also be why we only found eight types of macroinvertebrates. Our favorite macroinvertebrate was the helgramite. Helgramites can only survive in clean and healthy water and this also tells us that our water quality was good since they were present. They grow to about two to three inches long and live up to about three years. They eat other macroinvertebrates and they live under rocks or logs in the stream. And some of our advocacy recommendations include to try a different part of the stream or at a different part of the year and see if our evaluations changed. We could also slow the flow of water to the stream by replacing impermeable surfaces with permeable surfaces. And we can do this by replacing dirt paths with 
uh, I mean replacing concrete paths with dirt paths so that the water can soak in and filter. And we can also explore relationships between water transparency and low macroinvertebrate count, and that might give us an explanation for the low biological rating. As we did our test for our schoolyard data, we found out that there was a lot of erosion and debris near the storm drains as there was a lot of uh, bottles in the parking lot. We also had a no-mo meadow present, but there was a lot of invasive species. Our overall schoolyard rating was a 7.25, which is a D. Um, some contributing factors were land cover, vegetative cover, pollution sources, and stormwater management. Some other factors were waste management, which we got a 1.5, a water quality, which we got a 0.25, and some bonus features were the bike rack and the Nomo Meadow, which we got a negative one. Um, our advocacy recommendations were to raise awareness by stunting the storm drains around the schoolyard and slow runoff by placing a rain garden by the teacher parking lot, because as we all know, it doesn't just affect our school, it affects all areas around us. Our best schoolyard feature was native plants, which was a garden in front of the school, as you can see in the picture right there. Thank you, and go Eagles. Good morning. My name is Eric Mechtel. And my name is Karthik Gupta. And we represent River Hill High School. <clears throat> we were assigned the Middle Toxin Watershed for our watershed research. And to that end, we traveled to the Middle Toxin Environmental Area to conduct that research. There we obtained an overall rating of B minus. Well, actually, the stream obtained that rating. We just did the research. <laughs> that can be broken down into three subcategories, stream corridor, chemical, and biological ratings where we obtained scores of good, excellent, and fair, respectively. Now, we have to <clears throat> emphasize the fact that this is a single data point. This is a one-day test, and that we need to continue long-term research to assess the exact health of the stream and to find the best efficacy that we can find. <clears throat> so our assigned macroinvertebrate was the net-spinning caddisfly, which spins silk in the water to filter feed and as protection. For advocacy, we'd recommend um, further research, always further research. Um, we obtained high nitrate levels, but all other chemical ratings were low, which is um, kind of a coincidence. It's odd, so again, further research to investigate this oddity. <clears throat> For the diversity of macroinvertebrates was very, very high. We had all categories macroinvertebrates, but we obtained an overall low score, which again is kind of an oddity, so we'd recommend further research to find the exact causes. As Eric explained, our Middle Patuxent watershed earned a score of B minus. After this research, we analyzed our local schoolyard and resulted with a score of a D. After looking at factors such as land cover, stormwater management, pollution sources, and an environmental features bonus. As you can see in the table, the sum of the factor scores result in the letter grade. And the lower the score, the higher the letter grade. Because of our school's rain garden and buffers surrounding our pond, our score decreased two points, resulting in a D. Our school has incorporated many environmentally beneficial features that improve wa water quality, but we've concluded that the most important feature would be the rain garden located at the back of the school. Such a rain garden, if well maintained, would protect the middle production watershed from pollution sources by nearly 30%. The fact that our letter grade, a D, remains the same as last year's due to certain factors such as invasive species like Japanese stiltgrass only reinforces the importance of our advocacy. We suggest hosting an event to improve our rain garden, enforcing the currently existing no mo zone, and raising overall student awareness and involvement in the research of native Maryland plants. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kareem Mughal. Hi, I'm Kinsley Wargo. We're both from Atheson High School. And we are Ms. Klotz's fifth period biology GT class. Atheson High School falls into the Little Patuxent sub-watershed, even though we are on the border between the Middle Patuxent and Little Patuxent. And we did get our stream data from Lake Elkhorn um, in the Little Patuxent sub-watershed. To begin, the Lake Elkhorn stream site received a fair for its corridor rating, an excellent for its chemical rating, and a poor for its biological rating. It received a B minus as its overall letter grade. 
A major concern for the stream was erosion of the banks. This contributed to our low stream corridor rating. Another concern was the amount of tolerant species. While at first this may seem like a good thing, it actually wasn't because we didn't have enough sensitive species. This was main of, one of the main reasons that we had a low biological rating. Our personal like, favorite uh, species was the crane fly. The picture on the screen is the larval stage of the crane fly. As it matures, it looks very similar to mosquitoes, and it's actually nicknamed the mosquito hawk, but it's completely harmless to humans. We recommend to plant more aquatic plants in the stream and plant more native trees and shrubs along the banks. The aquatic plants will do three main things for the stream. It will slow the flow, it will provide more shelter for fish, and it will filter the water. The plants on the riparian buffer will help prevent erosion and will also help filter the water. To start out with the school data, um, two years ago we did have a renovation which allowed for the removal of outside classrooms and um, increase the amount of pervious ground that slows and filters stormwater and, um, and provides for cleaner water that enters our streams and ultimately the Chesapeake Bay. So um, our school yard data results, uh, we continue to mo monitor water quality to nearby stormwater ponds and we have low canopy coverage in the schoolyard and um, land cover was a 0.5, vegetation was a 1.97, pollution sources was um, 2.43, stormwater management was 0.75, and our overall letter score was 5.5. And in terms of pollution, um, I think we should, um, to, we should control litter and impl implement more education programs to teach people to throw trash away properly. And um, uh, our best schoolyard feature is utilize bike racks. It is good for transportation and for people who are not riding by, um, not riding uh, buses. And our advocacy recommendation is to increase tree cover. And uh, tree cover provides for more habitat and more shade for the schoolyard and ultimately for our students that play sports. And um, it also helps out fil filter water and also reduces stormwater management cost. And it um, also filters out uh, pol polluted uh, uh, pol pol pollutants naturally. And um, are also, uh, we mow the grass less frequently and create a no-mow no zone. And the no-mow zone slows the flow of water and increases habitat for plants and animals. Our ultimate goal is to reduce stormwater runoff to mitigate against flooding and erosion. And um, the Ellicott City flooding is a really good example that we should, um, we should use it as an incentive to ensure we have adequate, we have adequate stormwater management in place here and we can avoid such a disaster. Um, thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is McKenna Burns, and this is my co-presenter, Jemima Peters. We are here representing Oakland Mills High School, the home of the Scorpions. Um, we conducted our research at the Little Patuxent at Macomber Lane, and our watershed is so close to our school that we were actually able to walk to our destination. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about the stream corridor rating, chemical rating, as well as the biological rating. Our stream corridor rating was good. Our biological rating, in comparison to our chemical rating, was poor. Um, we found that there wasn't a, a diverse population of the macroinvertebrates in our stream, and that's a problem because our biological rating is basically a two-year snapshot of the health of our stream. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to our favorite macroinvertebrate, the mayfly. If you put your three fingers in the air and turn it upside down, that stands for M, and there are three tails on the mayfly. <laughs> Just thought y'all should know. <laughs> okay, so for water quality, we had a two. For vegetation, we had a two. For pollution sources, we had a five. And for stormwater management, we had a three. Our overall letter score was a 10.6, which is an E. Luckily for us, we have a native plant garden right outside of our school, but over time, it has not been maintained or taken care of. 
So we are going to fundraise for supplies to take care of our native garden. We are going to research and learn about Maryland, the native plants and how to take care of them. And we are going to reach out to Howard County Master Gardeners for expert guidance. While we take care of our native garden, we are going to grow native plants, which will um, uh, attract native insects, which will, over a matter of time, help with our diversity in our subwatershed. Thank you. My name is Nairi Hussain, and I'm from Ms. Carpenter's class at Wild Lake High School. And I'm Ioannis from Mr. Mandel's class at Wild Lake. We did the Little Patuxent sub-watershed and um, our school ground watershed. So, yeah. so our stream quarter rating was good, and our chemical rating was fair, and our biological rating was very poor. So our overall letter grade was a C. And our favorite macaron vertebrate is a damselfly. So. Yeah. Right. After an analyzing our schoolyard, we got um, an overall score of a E, 10.7, and our best schoolyard features were the native rain gardens, and the advocacy recommendations were the stencil some drains, uh, storm drains, and revamp, revamp the current rain garden. And also, um, Two things that we should, um, we thought it would improve our report card were uh, restoring the rain, the rain garden that was first created a few years ago, and it's been ignored for a while. Three of the downspouts from the back of the back roof of the school dump water into that area between two walls of the building and its hill. So all that water can cause er erosion of the dirt. The rain garden would help let more water into the ground. We expect to get help with the rain garden next year from the master gardener who helped us put it in originally. And the second idea was labeling, labeling the state stro storm drains on the school property so people will be aware that water goes into the bay and they shouldn't let trash or garbage or chemicals go in there. That's, where, uh, that's what we're going to do this year. The materials will, uh, were already ordered and we're scheduled to, to to do the drains next month with the help from people with the conservancy. Thank you. You were awesome presenters. I love to brag about our students. And uh, we first want to just mention, we know we had our big, big flood event on July 30th. Well, these students have engaged in polite and research discourse, playing different roles as we mentioned in the beginning. So congratulations to you for that. I also want to mention that Several of our high schools offered up a gala night, a watershed gala night, where they worked with master gardeners who taught homeowners about where their watershed was located. Students led, led the troops by engaging parents, kind of testing the parents, and also their siblings in an intergenerational approach. So not only are students engaged in watershed education, but now families and communities are. Thank you. So, you've heard about a few things students have done to improve schoolyards. You know, our schoolyards are really awesome, but we as Howard County, you know, we just have to push, push, push. That's how we are. We like to be the best. We like to do more than asked. Well, this year, nine schools, nine high schools applied for our Maryland DNR Explore and Restore grant, and they received almost $5,000 for, to improve their school this spring, that's amazing. Their projects will be completed by June 15th. Things such as finishing stenciling storm drains so every high school will have, be able to create awareness by having those finished. And also implementing small projects, small projects such as native plants. So it's very exciting that um, so many awards were, were given. But here we've got students from last year cleaning up their schoolyard, pulling invasives, 
stenciling storm drains, um, painting rain barrels to be installed, and we finish with, ta-da, look at oh, these that's folks. Me. That's you! <laughs> So really, as I mentioned before, yes, we've got the products, but some of the products we can't quantify. Some of the products, such as learning the watershed language, learning to understand the terms, learning the science. How do we quantify that in a report? I'm not sure. But I just want you to think about that, because what's coming next is really, really cool. And students, this is your opportunity to engage with all of our VIPs here today. I know, folks, I just want to let you know, these students have been practicing elevator speeches. So if you could please take a few moments to talk with them, we'd really appreciate it. Now, um, before we go outside, we do have a couple of folks that we wanted to mention. Kevin Chabot from NOAA is here. Kevin, if you could please stand up. And Olivia Kloss, the Director of Facilities, is also here from Howard County Public Schools. Okay, I ask that you listen first closely to directions, then move. First, we're going to ask all the VIPs if you have a blue crab on your name tag. If you could, in just a moment, head outdoors to the tent, and if you could wait for our students to come out to meet you. If your school name is listed here, you are also going to be following the VIPs. Actually, Marcus, if you could come on down. Marcus, um, our GT mentor intern, he's going to lead the VIPs out to the tent. Students who are in the purple right over here, folks, you're going to fold up your chair um, by giving directions from our green shirt team. They're going to show you where to put your chairs. The rest of you, if your school's not listed, you're going to stay in here with the VIPs that do not have a crab. So hopefully that's clear as mud, right? Uh -huh. So thank you all so much for your awesome attention. Thank you.